latest couple in town. Good day, sir. How are you? Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, drinks? No, we're, we're fine, sir. How was the moon experience? It was quite an experience. Mm. How about house? We are renting at the moment, but we intend to save enough to own our own house, right? Why not avoid all those Shylock landlords and own a house up front with the average income and cost of building houses today in Nigeria? Mortgage is the best option. No sweat. I tell you what, that was how I got my first house. And I've never regretted it. To make good homes and by implication a good society, an individual is expected to have an abode from which to take off and return at the end of each day. At the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, everyone deserves a home. Come join us at FMBN and let's shelter Nigeria together. to the functionality of the properties. Everything that they've done shows you that this is the top tier of luxury real estate at an affordable price. Now there's more than enough reason for you to visit www.thehavenhomes.com today. I just want to live there. Haven Homes. Home is where the art is. I just want to live there. In a country where affordable housing is a challenge, Parida Parkland provides you a community of satisfaction with 252 units that is tastefully finished with essential amenities within the estate. You can have a life, luxury life that you truly deserve. This estate is the first ever green certified housing community in Nigeria. With low carbon footprints, you save up to 50% on your power and your water supply. We have Mount Watering offer to get you started on this investment and a home for you and your family to live in. With as low as 10% initial deposit, you can have the dream home you truly deserve. So, what are you waiting for? Book an inspection today. You can call us on 070-3782-7983 and we'll help you get started. The quality and quantity of available housing stock in any country measures the development and quality of life of her people. On housing development, I make it my top priority to bring to you trending housing information and day-to-day -day housing plight of Nigerians. If me as a civil servant working for my country cannot get access to housing loan, I don't know what else we can do. Can you imagine that somebody will pay for two years rent and is not sure of the next three months money in his pocket? I also analyze the housing policies and strategies of government with stakeholders. Let the federal government next level be seen in the area of housing. Nigeria deserves to be housed. Housing issue is a journey of a thousand miles. I don't think that anybody can pretend that we're going to close the 17 million homes down in five years. Housing development is your one-stop source for housing information. Join me. During the first time of presentation, you'll be allowed to speak for five, five minutes. The MD of Federal Mortgage Bank will be the first person to start. If we showcase the Federal Mortgage Bank, how ready they are to solve the problem of COVID-19. How are they handling it? How are they going to address the issue of affordable housing? The next one that I can call any other guest speakers to join. We sincerely appeal to you to please keep to the time.
Keeping to time. Keeping to time is very, very important. MB, please, can you hear me? It's like your network seems to have a little challenge. Yes, you, I can hear you very well now. All right. That's why I have to change you, location. You will be the first person to speak, and we sell All your right. organization to you. You tell us what your organization is doing, especially at this COVID-19 time, and what we also intend to do after the COVID-19, okay. how, how okay. COVID-19 affect your operation, your mandates, your activities in the delivery of affordable housing. We are close from people to from uh, we are close from people, but now we want to start the program officially. It is 12.05 Nigerian time, and this is the time for another discussion. A webinar discussion that we focus on the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. The APS mortgage bank in the country, whose responsibility is to deliver affordable housing for Nigeria. My name is Festus Adebayo, and I'm happy to be here this afternoon. Today, our focus will be on the subject, Family Federal Mortgage Bank, housing solution, leading through the crisis. How is Federal Mortgage Bank going to lead us in this crisis? that at the end of the day, the issue of housing will not be affected. The present pandemic in the world has shown that housing is very important. Has shown that housing and health are born by the same period. It is yeah. our hope that after this pandemic, the government of every nation, especially in Africa, will put more emphasis to housing development. Before I introduce my speakers, it is very important for me to let the speakers know that we are being joined by over 800 people from across the world. I can see different countries on the platform. And I can see a lot of stakeholders waiting to hear policy statement from this conversation. I also want to recognize the presence of our colleagues in the media who are connected to this discussion. We want to appreciate you for finding time to be part of this very important program that we are going to display on the screen very shortly. With me today, I speak Musa Dangiwa, the Hennigan Director, Chief Executive of Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Pleased to be here. Akite Hamer, facilitating infrastructure development, banking and management experience, spanning private and public practices, as well as in academia. Prior to his appointment as the Managing Director of Federal Mortgage Bank, Akite Hamer Dandiwa has worked at different organizations. You have participated in many trainings in foreign countries in the area of housing finance, infrastructure development, among others. He is a fellow of the of architects. Also with me this very afternoon is the president of the Mortgage Banking Association of Nigeria, Adil Niyashimishi, who is a graduate of accounting from the University of Lagos, and a master's of business administration from the University of Lagos. He is a yeah. We also have with us this afternoon, Reverend Sovio Ugoshuku Obiora Shime, who is the immediate past president of Breda. Breda in Nigeria, mainly estate developers association of Nigeria. He's also the, he was also the president of the Enugu Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He has over 30 years of experience in the civil service, public service, and the private sector of the Nigeria economy. He was a consultant to federal mortgage, and he at present managing director of open group of companies that have delivered a lot of housing estates in various 
part. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much. Sorry, pleasure for me. Thank you. Thank I'm you. glad to be here. To Aliu. He's a versatile legal practitioner with specialty in finance, property, and international law. He's an articulate and persuasive negotiator with track record of resolving complex disputes and securing long time funding. A career goal is to ensure that development is inclusive and sustainable. Raimato Aminu Aliyu holds a bachelor degree in LLB from the University of Madiguri. She has attended professional development courses and seminars within and outside Nigeria and is a co author of a book titled Situating Alternative Dispute Resolution ADR in Political Sphere. She is widely traveled and as of today, Hagia is in charge of loan at the Federal Mortgage Bank. I also have with me this afternoon. Good afternoon. You are welcome. Thank you. Alaja Lee Yuwamako, who is the managing director of Jedo Investment Limited, delivered many housing estates in many parts of Nigeria. Alaji Wamako is at present the president of the Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria. Alaji Wamako, you are welcome. Glad to be. You are welcome on the program. Now, last but not the least, Mr. Fakaye. Mr. Fakaye, I, I always call him Eclopedia of Federal Mobile Bank. I've known him for over 25 years, and the only thing I've been seeing doing is to present papers, intellectual, very sound, resourceful paper on Federal Mortgage Bank. The next speaker for this discussion is no other person. So please tell us on the topic, how is Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria leading through the crisis for the housing sector in Nigeria? Architect Hamed, thank you. Well, thank you very much for, for that, Mr. Festus. Uh, the, the question was that, uh, what has changed in FMB in recent times due to this, uh, at, this, at this time? I must uh, confess to you that uh, we have operational results have improved significantly between 2017 to 2020. We came on board 2017, and uh, currently we are in 2020. But within the last three years, we have achieved a lot in terms of uh, many aspects of our own operations. One of it is the contributing states. When we came on board, there are a lot of states. As you quite well know that NHF uh, National Housing Fund is a contributing scheme by all Nigerian workers, uh, both formal and informal sector. When we come on board, some of the states are not contributing to the scheme. We are able to bring them on board up to seven states when we came on board. That has improved us to the currently now that uh, only two states are, are, are not yet joined into this scheme. Exactly. That is Kano and Oil. So uh, we have improved in that aspect. We have registered, we have improved in the register of the employers. 1,629 were brought into the scheme currently from, the, from what we met of 22,000 uh, employers. Now currently we have 23,760 employers. Currently we have over 5 million contributors to the scheme. It was through our coming within the last three years, over 500,000 were, were brought in into the contribution because when we came on board, it was 4.5 million contributors. Cooperative societies were also brought into the scheme because we realized that uh, the, the, the cooperative societies are in the informal sector. And the only way to bring them is to bring them on board and create um, an enabling environment for them in order to benefit from the scheme. So we are able to bring over 111 uh, cooperative societies into the scheme to make it over 1,169 more contributors, more organizations into the corporate society. And the number of collections, when we came on board, we met that uh, the fund has generated 232 billion so far. So 
we realize that uh, isn't that enough. With the contribution start that we brought in, within the last three years, we are able to, get to, to, to generate 151 billion more onto the 232 billion that was being generated in the 25 years that the bank has existed, 2000, 1992 to 2017. Now we have a total of contributions of 383 billion into this fund. So NHF contribution in terms of fund also is one area whereby when you contribute to the scheme, at the end of the day, you need your own fund when you retire or when you're out of service. When we came on board, we found that it's one challenge that the bank has been challenged. Uh, people have been having problem in getting their own funds when they retire. We realized that the only way is to improve our own uh, operations to ensure that more contributors who have exited have gotten their own fund. We met that there's only 10.8 billion naira has been refunded. We are the one that has refunded 23.8 billion to add to the 10 billion naira that has been refunded to the total refund of 34 billion naira. So in terms of loan generations and loan disbursements, we well, have met a lot in that area also to the extent that uh, we have given loan to the total loans approval of 128 billion. Out of it, 94 billion naira has been disbursed. Uh, generating a number of housing uh, mortgage loans to over 4,000 and uh, uh, home renovation loan of 43,000 43, uh, uh, more home renovation loans. So these are some of the things we have done. We have deployed some Oracle and Oracle database to improve our own services and then operational effectiveness. And we are about to prepare the enterprise for banking solution, which is with the uh, honor of minister for submission to the FEC. We have improved operation also. Recently, we have introduced, we have improved turnaround time by as much as over 30%. Recently, we have introduced or launch new products into this scheme when we came on board. The rent to own scheme is a scheme whereby some of our funded Esther that align uh, uh, without off takers were able to now deploy this rent to own is a scheme whereby our uh, go into the tenants at the end of the day, the houses become their own while they are paying their rent through that. We have also generally have also created the NHF construction individual loan while an individual with a C of O title of a good title can get this construction loan individually to build his own house wherever in the Federation. With this, you can just approach any of our branches nationwide and they can profile you and the loan will be given to you to build your own house at your own time. We have also the cooperative uh, is generating a lot of uh, customers. Cooperative housing development is given to cooperative societies to build houses for the cooperative members in which uh, cooperative housing loan is, uh, is given to the individuals. We have done a reduction of NHF equity contribution in order to improve our loan above 10 million naira. Now you pay only 10%. For a loan below 5 million naira, you pay zero equity currently, which used to be 10%. So this are the things that we are able to do. And uh, the manager has focused on to consolidate achievements going forward. Some of the management focus will be judging from the achievements we have realized that for in the past three years, we will not start on our OS and we will focus going forward. Some of our goals we aim to achieve is that uh, to get all the 36 states, the remaining two states that are not contributing, so that all the 36 states and FCT are contributing to the scheme. We have to ensure that uh, institutional investors prescribed by the NHF Act, the banks and insurance companies also comply under the terms that they will find attractive and acceptable. We have to integrate also the informal sector to the NHF scheme through the cooperative societies and thereby contribute to the CBN's financial inclusion target and part poverty. This one we can only do through improved service delivery to be more efficient and customer focused. This is what we are now focusing ourselves with. Additional new product, as we said, we want to focus on it uh, in, in the recent time, that is diaspora mortgages. We have started uh, developing, we have already developed this diaspora mortgages. We are now in the process of discussion with other stakeholders that are involved in this diaspora mortgages, like the Diaspora Mortgage Commission in the country. And we have reached out to some of the diaspora uh, people outside the country in London and 
some other uh, European countries in order to bring them into the, to the scheme of NHF to which uh, they can benefit from the scheme. We're expanding our funding sources and uh, so as to recapitalize the bank to the tune of 500 billion era. This one has gone very far and we're thinking of doing that. As I said earlier, also we're also reviewing our FMB and, and uh, uh, NHF acts for effectiveness in tackling housing deficit. So in this case, the currently that what we are doing, uh, some of the measures of FMBN is taking as a palliative uh, for mortgage banks and developers who are having challenges arising from pandemic. We are trying as much as possible to see that we treat every case, uh, uh, issues will be treated case by case basis. There will be no blanket approval quite well for requests uh, from PMBs on that. We have initiated dialogue with Imban towards working out a response to challenges and individuals may be facing, especially in the, in the mortgage uh, repayment. You'll find that those in the uh, self-employed category, they are the ones that have been most affected by this pandemic, to which uh, some people are locked for the next two months, for the previous two months, and only God knows whether it will extend to another one month or so. So for those categories, it's very clear that they will need some uh, moratorium, they must need some assistance in order to see what you can do to do that. But as uh, it came as on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, as, as we, are, we are having it, our cooperation was also was to overcome the present challenges and achieve a win-win solutions. So, you, so far, this is where I can, yes, I can. Uh, thank you, yeah, thank you very much. Come back to you, want to appreciate you. Thank you for all the lowdown you have given to us. We see that uh, within the period you came in, you have raised over 100 billion for, for the bank. That's a good job. 151, 151 billion. billion. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen other innovations that we have also championed on this program. I would like to draw the attention of all the media houses that are connected to this program to the first presentation of the head of the Federal Mortgage Bank. Though I'll be coming back to him later as I started receiving questions from the public for him. Now I will be going to the executive director of Federal Mortgage Bank, Kajia. We want to know from you, your presentation should be, how does the bank want to address loan disbursement and repayment issues in view of COVID-19? How do you intend to address loan disbursement? Have you know that the economy is not as strong as before? Well, Good afternoon, all. Um, how we intend to look at loan disbursement and repayment issue due to COVID-19. We have all known that due to COVID-19, Nigerian global economy has been badly hit. And uh, it is expected that government revenues will drop significantly and global recession has been forecasted for quarter two and quarter three of 2020. There will be a negative impact on government revenues finances of businesses and household income. Thus, housing, real, housing and real estate sector will experience some shock. As mentioned earlier by the, F, by the um, MD CEO, FMBN will be at the forefront of stimulating growth in the sector through our activities. We will continue to provide loans for real estate construction and provide loans to NHF contributors. Due to the prudent management of the NHF resources, we have adequate funds to meet our own loan applications for the time being. As an institution, we are working hard to resume full operations as quickly as possible, but our focus will be on loan applications that are under process so we can conclude and disburse as quickly as possible. This is to therefore assure NHF contributors with existing loan or refund applications that we will ensure that we conclude their request in good time. On the issue of loan repayment, we understand that some borrowers may experience challenges with repayment due to the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. For those with NHF mortgage loans in private and informal sector, we will advise that they talk to their primary mortgage banks on the challenges. We are all aware that CBN has taken the initiative to provide bank loan forbearance measures to ease the burden on customers who are facing repayment challenges. We also want to follow that initiative since our corporate goal is to provide housing to Nigerians. 
However, for borrowers who are still able to make repayment, we strongly advise that they do continue making regular, regular repayment as it is in their best interest. For balance, that does, does not mean that we will not be required to pay. It is only that repayment is postponed at times. This kind of arrangement means additional cost to the customer because the missed payments are added to the future uh, payment. As we are all aware so far, um, there was no um, federal or state agency or parastatal that, that did not pay its salaries. So we expect that in all the formal sector, all the 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 repayments is 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 met. So we are not looking. We are not. We are not. We we so far we have not seen a challenge on the formal on the on the formal sector so far. So we are expecting. We are expecting that um, the the primary mortgage banks will will all liaise with the with the beneficiaries and continue the repayment. I'm aware that due yes, to the pandemic. Uh, Madam, thank you, Agia. Thank you so much for what you have okay. said. I can report to you very clearly that due to the pandemic, a lot of tenants have not been able to pay rent for last month of March. And this is April has finished again. They have also not been able to pay. Yes, the federal government of Nigeria I'll be paying salaries I went through, but a lot of these people have spent highest percentage of their money on food and medicals. So I will come back to you. I've got already have questions. Let me go to Mr. Fakaye. Mr. Fakaye, please, are you there with me? Yes, I am, Mr. Festus. Yes. Record shows that in a country of 200 million people, we cannot boast of 200,000 mortgages since the inception of federal mortgage bank. What are the factors responsible for this situation? And what can we do to deepen the mortgage banking sector of the Nigeria economy? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, and uh, I think it's quite germane uh, because I think globally, the coronavirus pandemic has brought to fore the importance of uh, housing and basically how it relates to health issues, social issues, as well as financial and economic issues. So there is that prominence that we now have that there should be, you cannot have adequate health structures or a healthy environment without a good housing environment. Now, one of the ways in which people have access to housing is through mortgage. Uh, you could have a mortgage, you have financing for you to own your own house. Uh, other areas of accessing housing relate to rent. So some people may not own their own house, but they have the means to rent houses and they live within those houses. So, so it is very important that we must uh, focus on mortgage. The ultimate objective or the, the ultimate goal of most individuals is to own their own houses. And one of the ways which make it the easiest possible way is for them to have access to mortgage financing. Um, so yes, it has been said that we have probably less than 200,000 houses, uh, 200,000 mortgages in the country. And I think that's a cause for worry. Now, what may have occasioned, or what has occasioned that this malperformance nationally uh, can be attributed to a number of causes. Uh, ju not just uh, FMBM, but we're looking at the housing sector uh, in total. Uh, so you're looking at our legal structure, uh, the access to even have a land for people to build houses is a major constraint. And I'm sure some of our developers on board on the panel will, will, uh, will re re reinforce that fact. Uh, so the legal structure also requires that for every transaction in land, particularly as defined by the Land Use Act, 
every transaction in land must, uh, must have a governor's consent to be titled, I mean, to, to be regarded as legal. So those processes of getting land, those processes of getting title, those processes of transferring even title when you buy houses are very long and cumbersome. So in a mortgage transaction, you still go, need to go through all those processes. You have also the challenges of a high cost environment when it comes to mortgage transactions or housing transactions. The cost of land is high, relatively high in the country, particularly in the urban areas or in those areas where people actually do need those houses. You have the challenge of uh, high construction costs. You have the challenge of a high uh, cost of infrastructure. And most developers will tell you that in addition to building houses, they also have to provide some of those infrastructure needed for people to stay comfortably in those houses. They need to provide the roads to, to their sites. They need to provide electricity. They need to provide uh, water and so many other uh, infrastructural uh, aspects they need to provide, which all adds up to the cost for the off-taker when he's buying those houses. We have high cost of, of uh, building materials and even a high cost of financing. Uh, going to the, regu to the open market, going to banks to get funding for construction, you'll be faced with challenge of having interest rates as high as 20, 25%. So all these are some of the challenges that we face as a nation when it comes to, uh, to the issue of housing and the, the follow-up issue of mortgage financing. And probably that, that explains why a lot of Nigerians have challenges even accessing mortgages. I recall recently the MD of Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria made a special appeal, a passionate appeal at the governor's forum sometime late last year for governors to reduce the cost of, uh, of perfecting uh, and, get, and obtaining titles to land. In some instances, it's as high as 10% of the cost of the land itself. So imagine you are getting a house of 5 million naira. It means the cost of obtaining a title, obtaining consent to a mortgage, it's 10% of that. So it it's actually moves affordability beyond the level of most housing. Hence, uh, the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, the MD, made that appeal. And some states have actually uh, come on board, I mean, to, to actually reduce and restructure their pricing systems for, house, uh, for transactions in land. So we can look at it as either uh, the core being half empty or half full. Yes, we have the challenge of a very limited mortgage market, uh, which accounts for probably 0.5% of our national GDP. In other countries, uh, developing countries, you are talking of mortgage contributions to GDP of about 40%. In the well-developed economies, you are talking of mortgage contributions in the region of 70% or even more. For us, our case is different. Yes, our case is different. Uh, but we, I, I want to believe that as Nigerians, we should not focus on how bad the situation is. What we should focus on really now is what is being done to change that. And the good news is that a lot is being done. So we have institutions like Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria and other sister institutions in the housing sector, some of them which have come, come over recently, to number one, tackle the, the, the supply side of it in terms of creating or building houses so that you have a, a mass, mass production of housing. And we all know that when you have mass production, the prices usually drop. But when the prices drop, more people can afford, uh, can afford the houses that are being built. So that is one very good thing. Uh, that, uh, that is happening in the housing market. Another thing is that the legal structure is being changed. Now the CBN uh, and a lot of other stakeholders in the housing system are championing uh, the adoption of what we know as a model mortgage and foreclosure law. And what that law seeks to do is to, number one, make transactions in land, especially mortgage transactions, smooth, efficient, cost efficient, 
are very timely. So that within a few days, we apply for a title, for a C of O or R of O for your land, or you apply for, for the transfer of a title to, your, to you as a new owner, or you apply for the consent of, your, of the state governor for that land. It's done very expeditiously and at a reduced cost. It's done to provide comfort so that when mortgages are created, uh, we know that uh, there is also a foreclosure aspect of it, so that if the borrower defaults, the, 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 the institution that lends can easily and very effectively efficiently recover his money. All these things are part of those things which are happening within the housing ecosystem to improve it. Uh, the, my MD has talked about um, what we are doing as, a, as an institution. And as an institution, within the past three years, we have done um, about 20% of what we have done in over 28 years, within the last three years. And this shows that we are already on a trajectory, an upward trajectory. And it's only possible that things can only get better from this point. So let's not, let's not concentrate too much on what the issues are or what the challenges are, but on what is changing to make the issue, I mean, to make, to solve those problems, to remove those bottlenecks and make mortgage uh, financing much more acceptable. And also, thank you, Mr. Afaka. Yeah, you have done very well. We appreciate you for all that you have said. And I think I benefited a lot from you. And I'm sure all the, uh, the people who are with us on the program are, are really, really very impressed with you, your point. But now I'm going to the Mortgage Bankers Association of Nigeria president, Mr. Kilusi. My presentation, the presentation I need from you, have to do with the situation in Nigeria. We have gone to the streets of Abuja, Lagos. A lot of people don't even know what is mortgage. What have you been doing to support the Federal Mortgage Bank? It is like there's no mortgage in this country. Tell us what is the problem and the way forward. First of all, I want to thank um, the organizers for having me on this program. And um, knowing fully well where we are coming from, one as a country, and in terms of the uh, present situation, we've had an health crisis that's no bond to an economic crisis. But beyond that, I feel in terms of um, what we can do now is the fact that the opportunities we have, the, the time for us now where we are looking at how to have a reset for the housing sector, is an opportunity for us to turn the money to their money. In terms of engagement and what we are working to do with Federal Mortgage Bank, we will know clearly that in the past couple of years, only mortgage banks can access NHF. And we are working closely with Federal Mortgage Bank in ensuring to do this. There are a lot of ways where we engage with them. We know that there's a lot of challenges that's militated against creating home ownership for Nigerians. The housing deficit is increasing, we know that, because uh, for a country with a population of 2.6% population growth rate, we have more people joining the workforce, more people need to be housed. A lot needs to be done. One of the challenges we've had is the issue of titling, the issue of um, housing development, and of course, affordability in terms of rates, mortgage rates. The only source for affordable mortgage rate we have presently, apart from Federal Mortgage Bank, which is 6%, is also what Federal Housing Fund is doing, Family Loans Fund. And we are working closely with them. There are a lot of um, dead assets, a lot of serialized developments, houses that have been completed because a lot of Nigerians, what we do as entrepreneurs is we have what we call a, a, a last led strategy for development, not market led. People go ahead to just develop big houses. All over in Abuja, we find a lot of big houses which are unaffordable, even in Lagos. And because of this, we find out that the market of the people who can afford this, which is the people at the lower end of the pyramid, it is too expensive for them. We are working strongly with Federal Mortgage Bank and working with all the other partners to ensure that we bring mortgages more affordable to and are accessible to Nigerians. These are areas where we are working with them. There are a lot of things that need to be done. And we believe strongly that the opportunity for this uh, right now, the challenge of COVID, provides an opportunity for us to press the reset button for housing. Let's use the opportunity for all stakeholders to work together. 
come up with good policies so that by the time the by the time we are the long time is over, we have new policies, we have new strategies to ensure we can engage. This is an opportunity for us to turn this lemon, to this housing lemon into housing lemon. There is so much to be done. And we in the Monte Banking Association of Nigeria, we are ready to work with all stakeholders to ensure once and for all we can take advantage and maximize the opportunity for us to have more Nigeria and become homeowners. We have seen the problems we have. When you have a situation where people don't have homes, when you're talking about um, lockdown, isolation in your homes. If you are homeless, how can you isolate? You cannot isolate on the streets. If you are involved, if you are living in a poor housing, how can you wash your hands? If you are living in a slum, you have to band together for a lot of people. All the things we're talking about, we can see. It is the opportunity for us to ensure we fix this. This is the cost to action. And we are ready and willing to work with all stakeholders, including Federal Mortgage Bank. I must say that Federal Mortgage Bank and Reda, at the Federal Mortgage Bank, we work with them on the more closely because uh, monthly, we have monthly meetings with them where we sort out all the issues affecting mortgage access. These are areas we continue to work with them and all lands are on the deck to ensure we lift these and increase ownership for Nigeria. Thank you. We have appreciate you. Now I'll be going to Reda President, the Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria President. I want you to address us on the issue of affordable housing delivery by your members. We all know that the main concern of developers is to make profit. And affordable housing is about cost reduction and no sales price. How can we reconcile the two as your association? How can you contribute to this development since no much profit will be involved? That is the focus we want you to give us in just three, four minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Are you with me? I can hear you. Thank you. That's right. Um, going to your first question, Raiden has uh, been organizing conferences and workshops, training programs in all the geographical zones of this country to be able to educate our members and increase their knowledge in housing affordability and the production of these houses. Raiden, in collaboration with some human development institutions like Center for Housing Development, uh, Housing Studies in the University of Lagos, and some of the developmental finance institutions like Federal Mortgage Bank, uh, Family Home Fund, NMRC, Shelter Africa, and some other regulating institutions, especially the Standard Organization of Nigeria and the Special Control Unit against Money Laundering and organized seminars and conferences, workshops to increase the level of knowledge of our members. These are what we do to make sure that we are formidably on the ground to be able to produce these houses, to be up to, tax, up to the task of what the business is all about. We partner with international housing institutions and some international training institutions like this. <laughs> Every entrepreneur in this industry, uh, in the industry, is whether in agriculture, manufacturing, uh, commerce, just like housing and real estate, what we do is about having a positive return on investment uh, or profit. Developers are not alone in this desire of making profit. Even some government uh, enterprises like uh, uh, like to have positive returns as well on their business. Affordable housing, we all know, is about the ability to pay for a house, given the income of the end user. However, the developer's selling price is determined by the cost of inputs, land, building material, cost of finance, cost of labor, cost of approvals, titles, and the building plan, among others. If the developer can procure this input at a reasonable rate, his challenges will not be out of turn. Thus, it is the cost of input has to be the low expected for the local prices. Uh, however, for example, if we are to 
and you take an EDL from Federal Mortgage Bank, we don't determine the prices of those uh, houses. It is determined by the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, who place the prices of these houses and the cost to be fund. Uh, the cost of fund is being incurred also in this uh, uh, articulation. However, the developer selling price is determined by, you know, this input, and uh, from this input is we, we look at uh, cost of titling, cost of land, cost of uh, finance, and the rest of it is what will make these houses uh, be below or to be costly. And based on these issues, if we are getting it at a lower uh, price, we will be able to achieve what we want to achieve within the stipulated period. Uh, Mr. Pesos, I submit my case. Thank you, Redan, uh, President. Uh, I will be going now to Reverend Swabi Yogoshuku Shime, the Group Managing Director of the uh, Open Group. Dear Reverend Shime, intervention is coming. It will be announced by the Central Bank of Nigeria. What do you have to say? What presentation can you tell us on this program? as to the reason why we must have collaboration so that the intervention can have the right impact because of the effect of this COVID-19. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, my, my colleagues, fellow panelists who have made presentations on diverse areas and I appreciate the presentation that I made. The question you are asking is very simple. How can we move in fast and use the real estate sector as the engine room to create employment and to start the economy again. Many people have preferred various options, and I'm glad to be here on the FMBN uh, webinar. And I'd like to say that of all the institutions that we can create um, are new to manage the intervention in the sector, I think the Federal Market Bank is already on ground, positioned by these statistics branches, zonal offices, to give us a quick win, a low-hanging fruit approach. Um, let me say this. For us to be able to intervene properly, we need to forget about using the past as a, an, a pretext to be able to deny some critical institutions the opportunity to perform. Number one, the Federal Market Bank is on ground. They have made their presentations, they have had their uh, successes, and they have also had their mistakes. Having been with them as a consultant since 2005, I was there for about 10 years as a consultant, and I have been with them as a developer, and I sit on the board of the Premier Mortgage Bank. I do know that one critical thing that we need to do is to recapitalize the Federal Mortgage Bank. And then also, at the same time, restructure their governance structure and their processes so that we can use the funds for recapitalization as a bet and put a precondition for its release to be that they must do A, B, C, D in plugging the identified challenges in their operational dynamics. That has to be done. Instead of creating a new institution, studying people who will learn from the, what they have uh, known over the years, their experience, and then recapitalize them restructure the governance structure. Over the years I've been with Federal Market Bank, I found out that we have had very good MDs like the one we have, but the pressure from the external sources has been a very severe challenge for the management to contain. And it is either you are kicked out if you don't agree, or you have to bend. And it's a very strong structure, but if we can restructure of the structure of FNBN, it will be some of the political class on the management so that they can be able to perform their functions more critically. Also, many a time we have sought to blame, we have to restructure the external operating environment. Uh, Fakaye has mentioned about the issue of the modern mortgage and foreclosure law, which NMRC, Nigeria Housing Finance Program, and other stakeholders have worked upon. But we have also noted that the transaction time and transaction costs at the state level is a critical impediment 
Many projects have been abandoned because of the issues of interference of the state chief executives who have stopped on site because they felt that the person who initiated the project is not from their political party or was loyal to the past, immediate past executive. So we need to look at the operating environment because every chain is as strong as its weakest link. In 2010, we did a study with Federal Mortgage Bank and then Mortgage Bank Association of Nigeria to be able to look at the challenges that is hindering the smooth flow and transition from construction to mortgage. And we find out that over 70% of the factors are outside the purview of Federal Mortgage Bank, Mortgage Bank Association of Nigeria and developers and lies within the jurisdiction of land administrators in the various states who control fiscal development policy, implementation, and processes. So what do we need to do? We need to interface with them and present to them a low-hanging fruit of the benefit derivable if they can improve the operating environment in the states by, one, reducing the cost of activities at the lower level. Some few years ago, Professor Ian Gete, who was in Nigerian mortgage finance company, uh, MD, gave us a study that the transaction cost at this level sometimes can be as much as 34% from approval of the layout design to the charges you have to pay for transfer of title and to the charges you have to pay for so many other things, uh, waste management policy. There are many organs of the state that do a lot of multiple transactions and all this impact on the selling price. So for us to be able to uh, make sure that this intervention from gets right, we have to improve the structural underpinning of the transaction dynamics and make it more holistic. Another area we have to work on is on the area of data. Data is key. Working under the Nigerian uh, Real Estate Data Collection and Management Program, we have been able to identify four critical areas. And they need to work on this area because what we now have is a walk in the, in the dark. Nobody knows where the numbers are. How many people are there to be served in Lagos, in Abuja, in Kaduna, in Enugu? in Calabar, in, in Sokoto. We need to have the numbers, because if you're going to serve somebody, you need to know the numbers we are cooking for. And we don't have this data. We don't have the data of the affordability. We don't know the data of where they are located. We don't even know how the data. So we have to have a very strong aspect of the intervention to be in form of data. And that has already been established by the Nigerian Real Estate Data Collection and Management Program, which involves Federal Mortgage Bank, uh, Federal Ministry of Power, Water and Housing, which involves Redan, Bank, and other stakeholders, including World Bank, James 3, National Bureau of Statistics, National Population Commission, and other private sector entities. So we have to work together to have the data that will let us know where the Nigerians are and what can they can afford so that we will have targeted construction and mortgage. It will be seamless. Also, I do know that over the years, many of the states lack computerized uh, land registry. We cannot have very quick uh, interrogation of issues on the real estate unless we have computerization of this real estate. So we can have a section of the fund devoted to institutional capacity improvement along the value chain of the real estate so that each of these stakeholder institutions on the transaction dynamics and value chain of the real estate ecosystem will have an improvement of their capacity to deliver on their role because if they don't have a chain is as strong as this weakness link, and we're going to have a lot of problems. I do also think that the bank and other institutions like Family Homes Fund need to be structurally improved so that there will be a very strong bonding so that flowing from one development to another or one segment to another will be easy and seamless. That has not been done and we have operated in silos so that each policy is seen as an end to itself instead of being seen as a means to an end. First effort to do that. And also do think that for the past years, we have so many laws that have been abandoned at the National Assembly. We have to tell the National Assembly that we have to operate within a given menu, a given set of code of conduct and norms, and that has come from the National Assembly. They have not taught these laws since 2006, 2004, where some of them have been sent. And that's not fair. And because of the COVID now, we have seen the impact of housing on the issue of health of our citizens and the security of life. So we have to meet them to be able to see what do they need to ensure that Nigerian Institute for Legal and Strategic uh, Legal Studies improve their capacity to generate new laws 
and have some of the bills that have been sent to them. I also do think that um, Federal Mortgage Bank, which has close to 5 million subscribers on the National Housing Fund, should be asked to lead the fight, not only on the issue of collection of money, because over the years of my interface with Federal Mortgage Bank, the emphasis has been on the issue of increasing collection. Collection is a means to an end. And therefore, if the end is to provide housing for Nigerians, they must also lead in making sure that we have an effective value chain improvement by being able to invite all the stakeholders and devote a portion more of their, they are already doing that in our meeting with, with them. We, uh, they have been meeting with Mbang, with uh, Redan, and NECA, NLC. But they need to go down to the states because every development is on land. This is Thank you, uh, Reverend Shime. Thank you, so Reverend Shime. We appreciate you for that. By all indications, the National Assembly, the need for them to assist us cannot be overemphasized. I don't know how many of the National Assembly members are connected to this program. We sincerely need their help. Beyond that, the concurrent list of the Nigerian law put the power of the land in the hand of the governors. I don't know how many commissioners for housing is collected here. We need the help of state government to be friendly to housing development. We need to remind them at this very crucial time that there's no oil again. The oil value is going down. In fact, the value of money is of water is increasing and it will get it better than that of the oil. And the only way forward to get employment for Nigerians is through housing. So we are calling on the state government to do more in this area and choose more interest in the area of housing. Enough of using housing development to get revenue through building approvals and all sorts of bills. With that, we cannot deliver affordable housing. I would like to go, I want to thank everyone that are connected on this uh, program. I can see a lot of questions coming in. I want to appreciate all of you. I want to be going now at the level of short, short response. I don't want you to use, do more than two minutes. I have many questions here. A lot of people are waiting for policy statement. And I'm going back to the managing director of the Federal Mortgage Bank now. I need a clarification from him on the issue of moratorium. What palliative is Federal Mortgage Bank doing for the mortgage bank? What is your palliative for the estate developers who are owing you money and who have to pay money every month? What is the palliative you have for NHS subscribers? Some of them will default and not pay the mortgage bank. How do we intend to handle this crisis for now? Architect Ahmed, thank you. I two minutes left. Uh, thank you. Have so many well, questions. thank you very much. Uh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that. I said it earlier that uh, definitely the, the, the COVID-19 has affected, uh, the pandemic has affected a lot of cash flow to Nigerians, especially the self-employed. If I will start with the subscribers, once you are self-employed, you have to go out and earn for a living, to earn for the rent. You, you are very much affected. For that kind of categories of people, the moratorium is essential, is confirmed, we have to give it to them. It depends on the, uh, the PMI, who is profiling them to see the, what you can do. And it depends even on the length of time the pandemic has, uh, has, 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 has ended, has taken us to. If it can be three months, six months, up to nine months, it can be a moratorium to those categories of people. For those categories of people who are civil servants, uh, and in the state or federal or local governments, uh, civil servants, those are the ones they earn from their salaries. We are watching to see which of the states are not, would not be able to pay their own salaries due to cash flow or due to the pandemic. Those are the criteria. Once we verify that that one, you, you, you are affected, your state is affected, the PMI will advise us and then we can go ahead and do that. So PMBs, so requests from PMBs for moratorium or mortgage repayments shall be, will not be a blanket approval. 
it will be in such cases at which Richard on their merit, whose justification and evidence provided on employment or salary status of the beneficiaries. Our risk management group in our bank are looking at that to see how they can engage and write to the PMBs and then emphasize the excuse for no repayment for, will, be to, for, will, will be treated uh, in that aspect. For PMBs, I'm sure they are also affected in terms of maybe collection. In terms of their collection of their, um, of their repayments from the off takers into the bank. So these are the things that we want to consider, but definitely there will be more return on the case by case basis, depending on the, uh, the on the effect of the pandemic on that institution, on that individual, or on that uptake. Thank you very much. Hello. I allow you to go. Can you tell us what is your relationship with other housing agencies? in Nigeria, like Family Home Fund and Nigeria Mogheri Finance. What is your relationship? As Reverend Shime mentioned collaboration. What can you say about that? Can we know what's your relationship with your other organizations? Honestly, Reverend Shime has said it, uh, has, said it has, has hit the nail on the head directly by saying that that collaboration is very much essential, is very much needed. And uh, I also assure you that uh, we have had a lot of collaboration of recent. The Family Home Fund has seen the reason they have visited our office and uh, we have discussed extensively on how we can collaborate and work together. In as much as the Family Homes Fund are the, are, the end, are, the, are the supply end, we can be on the demand side of, of it. Whereby they produce the houses, affordable housing, as you can see that their focus is basically on the social and affordable housing. We have gone into, into a good collaboration together with them to see that uh, we work together. They are producing houses to which we can now create mortgages for, and then repay the F family homes fund the money, and then they create more houses. At the same time, FMBN can create the mortgages. So also the uh, Nigeria Mortgage Finance uh, Corporations, we are also into collaboration with them. In as much as uh, the housing sector needs to be revived, the housing sector needs to be uh, transformed. This collaboration is very much needed. I wish to assure you that we are in very much good collaboration with them, and we are working closely together to see that uh, we uh, improve uh, housing finance and we also uh, improve uh, access to home ownership for Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to Mr. Fakir, the Federal Market Bank of Nigeria. I'm not going to direct this question to the NHF. I'm going to direct it to you directly. What assurance can you give to NHF contributors? Some of them are connected now. They'll be contributing money to Federal Market Bank. What assurance can you give NHF contributors on safety of their funds with Federal Mortgage Bank? And how are you improving transparency of your operations? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, on a lighter note, maybe my MD will have been better positioned to answer that. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank, thank you, sir. So, well, we're a banking institution, uh, we're a financial institution, and I think Nigerians must understand that. And so we fall under the supervision of the Central Bank of Nigeria. So the same criteria, the same uh, expectations of the Central Bank on commercial banks or other financial institutions uh, what is, is the same expectation of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. Uh, we have been collecting the National Housing Fund for almost 30 years now, and I think um, we keep improving every day. Uh, under the present board and management of the bank, uh, we have been able, we have succeeded in getting approvals for a corporate governance framework for the bank. We have gotten approval for a risk management framework for the bank. And these frameworks are requirements for all financial institutions all over the world. For FMBN, the corporate governance framework and the risk management frameworks that we have are what are comparable to any other, what is what any other financial institutions all over the world uh, has, 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 has applied. So that is one 
cause of consolation for our uh, contributors. Uh, secondly, we have introduced, so under the same management, we have introduced our of seen of improving transparency. Uh, the MD mentioned about the automation of the bank much earlier, and I want to refer mm. specifically to the Star 219 hash uh, USSD platform that the bank introduced uh, about two years ago. Star 219 hash, which means that any of our contributors anywhere can on their phone, once they have their NHF participation number, they can use their GSM phone on any of the GSM net, net platforms, dial star 219 hash, and put in your participation number. What that means is that you will now connect your NHF records in FMBN to your phone. When we do receive your NHF contribution on a monthly basis, you get an SMS alert that Mr. So 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 amount of money has been received by any by Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria as your NHF contribution for this particular period. The Star 219 hash uh, platform is also versatile because you can actually perform a lot of other uh, get a lot of other services on that platform. You can check the balance of your NHF contributions. Uh, you can check your affordability for any of our loans and uh, our services. Uh, you can register or you can get access to information about, FM, about uh, FMBN and its products and services. So that's those are one of the things we do in terms of transparency. We also build in our financial records as well so that Nigerians know the financial position of the bank as of today. Uh, we had some period in which there was some years we missed, but we have updated that so that we are quite transparent as a financial institution and as well as a manager of National Housing Fund. So all our contributions should be rest assured. And as the MD has also said, we are refunding all, I mean, as soon as a contributor qualifies by reason of retirement uh, from, uh, from service or attainment of 60 years, you get access you. to your refund. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Fakir. I think we are getting there. Uh, we have receiving so many messages from some of our participants. We, I see some of you commending. I see some of you appreciating. I see one or two people complaining about the audio. Please, if you have a challenge with your audio, please check your network. You can see the challenge we're having with Mr. Fakir now. It's difficult for her to zoom in like the way we have been zooming others, because the network where she is is not working properly. So, Mr. Fake, we need to improve that. If that's the way you can improve your network and where you are. Okay. For all the media that are joining us, we appreciate you. Please, we appreciate you. Now, I have this question for the president of the Mortgage Banker Association of Nigeria, Mr. Akinri. The question is this, off-takers complain bitterly about added costs and processing delays imposed by primary mortgage institutions. What is your reaction to this complaint? Somebody also wrote here that he got a message that their payment have been given to a mortgage bank but the, 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 from the Federal Mortgage Bank, but the PMI Delay the disbursement. Please, can you highlight this? This is very critical that you have to tell your world. Half the cars complain bitterly about added costs and processing delays imposed by primary mortgage institution. What is your reaction to this? All right, thank you so much, uh, the moderator. Once again, I must use this opportunity to clarify to a lot of people that sometimes in a mortgage transaction, there are quite a number of other fees and expenses that need to be paid, which are paid through the mortgage bank. And a lot of people mistake these expenses as payments to direct to the mortgage bank. For instance, you pay closing costs, you pay for survey, you pay for property search, you pay for insurance and all of that. All these are paid through the mortgage bank because the mortgage bank must ensure those payments are made before they route it to the ultimate beneficiaries. If you bunch all of these costs together and assume it's a payment directly to the mortgage bank. 
for the mortgage bank, the only thing that goes to the mortgage bank is, of course, the interest and fees you pay for the loan you are being given. If they are paying insurance, if they are paying property search, mortgage perfection cost, sometimes, as somebody said, it's as high as 10 or 15 percent in some states. If you pay that, people sometimes add this to the interest cost and tell you that, oh, I pay 15 percent for perfection of the mortgage, in addition to 6 percent from federal mortgage, that's 21 percent. I am being overcharged. Please, we must be able to clarify from the mortgage bank and we are willing to do that to show how much of this is going to the pocket of the mortgage bank and the one going to other service providers that is one so this is a key initially we offer letter this is the and mortgage banks are ready willing ready to always provide clarification so that there is no misunderstanding now we've also noted that there are always delays in processing NHF sometimes in disbursement, sometimes customers will go to a mortgage bank and they will provide only the application letter. They will not provide supporting documents that require for them to evaluate the mortgage, to originate it. What do I mean by this? Of course, you need things like your salary payment schedule, salary slip, um, letter of employment, documents about the property, for you, they think the clock has started ticking. We have engaged mortgage banks and we have application because, of course, turnaround time starts ticking from the time you complete, you collect it. It is sometimes leads to delay. Sometimes when you collect the application letter and the customer tells you, I'm coming back to provide the documentation. tomorrow next week it does not provide this information meanwhile what is found on the application letter is the data is from the remote back so the, there are areas we are working around on this secondly sometimes we talk about the issue of delayed disbursement approval from federal requirement before disbursement sometimes even you have application at the central bank application was central mortgage bank and of course when you have approval, the circumstance of the man may have, he may have lost his job. So he did, but we need to clarify, to clarify again, whether all the information and the position of the customer at the point of application remains the same at the point of this. Perhaps at that point in time, what is property has been sold? And it's no matter that there is time for them to also be sure that all the things that were done at the point of initial origination as of course, we've also said mortgage banks carry along their customers. I think there's a network problem in uh, interacting with Mr. King, uh, King yourself. But that's okay. We we continue. Um, I will be uh, going to Hajia, the executive director. I have a lot of messages here. One is saying I joined NHF in 2019. Uh, please, I need to know how I can access. The person that sent that message, I don't know why you are saying. FNBN have done a lot of publicity and a lot of mortgage education. And I believe uh, you're supposed to know this. And if you don't know, please visit, try to go on the uh, Federal Mortgage in the Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, these information are there, question and answer for how you can access NHL. Please, you must have been contributing at least for six months before you can apply. Please, the six months is the major is the most important requirement there. The another person is asking a message. I'm working in the private sector. How do I assess NHL? I think the same thing is also happening. FMPN is taking care of both the former and informal sector. Another, another question again, what is FMPN doing to improve its cloud? Okay, this is a very serious question. Uh, I think I'll be sending it to the executive director. This question came from uh, African Development Bank. Uh, the question is, what is FMPN doing to improve its cloud in terms of commercial viability, operational profitability, and development impacts? 
so as to attract good investment from private investor, impact investor, and development finance institution, so as to diversify its funding source other than the public wallet, that is government. Executive director in charge of loan, I don't know whether you can give me a little response to that, then I can go back to the MD to tell me one or little thing if I go back to the other president. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Um, as discussed earlier by the um, discussant, the effort Federal Mortgage Bank is doing is on how it can be able to, to be recapitalized. We have seen um, our source of income is from is our source of fun is from the NHF contrib contributors. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are as much as possible trying to see how we can, we can improve on that um, source of fund. Away from NHF contributors, the MD um, made mention of the um, other, other source of income from the um, commercial banks and the and the insurance companies, which um, we are trying, trying very much to see that we can, we, we, we can be able to assess that. Um, we also trying as much as possible to see that our product can be, can be um, so, so interesting for the investors to come in and invest. Largely, our major, our, uh, the major issue the investors are always talking about is the, is the um, um, interest rate of one digit. And we are always um, working on one digit because of it is the contributors' money that we, are, that we are using. So we cannot go more than that. But when we were able to get um, some products that are attractive to the investors and the investors can be able to invest we can be able to move away from 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 um the um six the the the, the one digit interest probably to to to, to something else that, that the, the investors can be able to make profit from that hello hello now we like to go, Madam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am moving to the Madam President. I want to ask you this question, as received from the public. What are the challenges facing Madam President? This question goes to you. What are the challenges facing as developers? The delivery affordable housing. Can you just highlight the problem within two minutes? Um, uh, land at affordable rate. Preferably, you can get land maybe directly. That will have been easy. Availability of infrastructure, primary infrastructures normally, as rightly mentioned by Pakai, are not there. Most of the developers we have to do the even the primary infrastructures to our sites. Um, construction finance, we are lucky to have Federal Mortgage Bank uh, because they serve as a father to us. That is the only place you can go in Nigeria today to access fund at a single digit, and we should have been very grateful to Federal Mortgage Bank. For that, but uh, one tree cannot make a forest. We are still looking forward for other people to come forward with this kind of uh, lofty and good initiative by federal mortgage bank. We thank them for that. Titling of uh, to land. Sometimes it takes difficult uh, stages before you get a title for your property. Take for instance here in Abuja, if you go to Lube uh, phase five, uh, you will find out that a lot of problems are there. Maybe so many people build their houses, they cannot have title. A timely approval of building plans and the permit is also another encumbrance to us in providing these uh, uh, affordable houses. Then enabling environment, easy of doing business, cost of per uh, perfections of titles and documentations in case of mortgage creations. 
And all these things, uh, you know, uh, surrounded us, and uh, we feel it is an encumbrance in the provision of affordable houses. Until all these bottlenecks are being removed, before we can move forward in talking about affording, uh, providing affordable houses. This is what I said. Uh, Mr. President, now yeah. I want to go back to the MD of the Federal Mortgage Bank. I want to go back to the MD of Federal Mortgage Bank. And I have two questions for him that I want him to answer within three minutes as received from the public. The first question is, to what extent do state and zonal offices of FMBN pursue the FMBN vision? Is there any way you assess their performance to be sure that they are really representing the Federal Mortgage Bank vision clearly? Then the second question, data and information are important in housing development, financing delivery and management. Can the FMBL champion housing development research and provision of data and information in this sector for the benefit of all stakeholders, like a similar role being played for decades by the Canada, by Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation? I believe the President MD understands the message from that person. Want to know whether FMBA can champion yeah. data, on data and information? MD, please. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Festus. The first question you said that about what role are the zonal and uh, uh, branch managers performing towards uh, the vision, enriching the vision of FMVN. I think that uh, it's very German that uh, they are doing a lot. In the sense that the bank has other check and balances that they used to have. We have an audit committee that goes around every quarterly to go and assess them. We have the, uh, our own corporate communication group that goes around and do that. And uh, we assess even the branch based on the sensitization they have done on the NHF contributors within their own domain. We have to ensure that for every branch we're having, they must ensure that they identify those contributors within their own domain to go at least monthly or bi-monthly to go and sensitize them about the product and service of the bank and only of the new product that we are having within, within that time. So we have been on them and we are doing that. Apart from the fact that we do have a quarterly retreat whereby all the branch managers and donor managers and the group heads and the management and even sometimes on the board we meet at a particular location within the country to discuss and then digress and then even brainstorm some of the issues. It was in some of this fora that uh, the issue of the turnaround time uh, was even discussed, how we can improve our own services and other things. So these are the kind of uh, uh, check and balances that we do, and uh, we do assess them on that basis. At the head office, we have a group head that is in charge of field office coordination. He is in constant touch with all our uh, branches every week. You send to us an update on what you are able to do, what you have not been doing, and then the, the, the group will now assess you and then forward to you an instruction from the management on certain things or bulletins of, uh, of any of the information that are needed. So the branches are in the forefront in doing that, and uh, we, we are glad to tell you that uh, they are doing uh, a lot toward that. The second issue is on the data. What do I do about the data? We have to champion the data quite well. That uh, FMBN we could, we have a data of of five million over five million contributors nationwide that are contributing to your fund. So for anybody that is coming to invest in housing in the country or anywhere in Nigeria, FMBN should be the first point of call that one should come uh, should come to do. All these five million contributors, they are within the range of low and medium income earners who constitute over 80% of the Nigerian population, of the work, workforce in or the population. So uh, currently, the, 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 that champion, that's that, uh, on board, but we are not the one champion it. Luckily, it was the Central Bank of Nigeria at uh, the forefront of championing it. But to our members, we are active members and even financial members to this uh, real estate data and collection uh, management committee 
to which Redan, the president, the former president of Redan, Reverend Obochime, he was on the champion, it, and I'm sure he's still a member of the coordination committee, despite the fact that the current Redan president should also be a member. But uh, there are a lot of organizations, all the stakeholders that are involved in housing delivery are members of this real estate data and collection and management committee that is championed by the Central Bank of Nigeria under the National Housing Program. Especially, as, you can, as, you can, as far as I can remember, Imban are members, FNBN are members, and uh, Redan are also key members of that association, of that uh, committee. And uh, I'm sure NMRC are also uh, strong members and uh, Family Homes Fund of recent, I'm sure they should be included in that, in that list. So the data, as we rightly said, is very much key and, uh, and very vital in ensuring there's any development, vital development that will come into the country. So we are championing that, and uh, as I've confirmed to you now, we are bona fide members and even financial members to that uh, committee that has been championed under the Central Bank of Nigeria. Thank you very much. And all the participants, very important yeah. stakeholders all over the world. We want to go a break for just two minutes. I will be right back. The latest couple in town. Good day, sir. How are you? Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, drinks? No, we're, we're fine, sir. How was the moon experience? It was quite an experience. Mm. How about house? We are renting at the moment, but we intend to save enough to own our own house. <sighs> Why not avoid all those? Shylock landlords and own a house up front. The average income and cost of building houses today in Nigeria, mortgage is the best option. No sweat. I tell you what, that was how I got my first house and I've never regretted it. To make good homes and by implication a good society, an individual is expected to have an abode from which to take off and return at the end of each day. At the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, everyone deserves a home. Come join us at FMBN and let's shelter Nigeria together. In a country where affordable housing is a challenge, Parida Parkland provides you a community of satisfaction with 252 units that is tastefully finished with essential amenities within the estate. You can have a life, luxury life that you truly deserve. This estate is the first ever green certified housing community in Nigeria. With low carbon footprints, you save up to 50% on your power and your water supply. We have Mount Watering offer to get you started on this investment and a home for you and your family to live in. With as low as 10% initial deposit, you can have the dream home you truly deserve. So, what are you waiting for? Book an inspection today. You can call us on 070-3782-7983 and we'll help you get started. To the quality, to the functionality of the properties, everything that they've done shows you that this is the top tier of luxury real estate at an affordable price. Now there's more than enough reason for you to visit www.thehavenhomes.com today. I just want to live there. Haven Homes. Home is where the art is. I just want to live here. Reverend Shime mentioned about the issue of recapitalization of federal mortgage of Nigeria. My question to the MP is this Given the economic realities of COVID 19, what is the hope of realization? of FMB hand recapitalization. Are there other sources of capital under consideration? My name is architect Ahmed. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Yes, the economic impact of COVID-19 presents a lot of challenges, especially as we are seeking sole equity ownership by the federal government. 
because even the federal government itself are facing challenges in as much as the price of oil has uh, dwindled. You'll find that uh, the, even to finance the budget is now a problem for even the federal government of Nigeria. So, however, we have also our own uh, mode of uh, capitalization is a bit diverse. It's, uh, it's, that's why we, even at the inception of, of even the recapitalizing of the federal government, we gave two sources of funding the 500 billion naira capitalization. We have 60% uh, to come from the debt capital and then 40% uh, from the uh, equity capital. The equity capital is what will come from the federal government, which is 200 billion naira. Which I want to tell you that uh, when we say we need 200 billion naira from the federal government, that doesn't mean that we need it all, the whole of 200 billion naira to move. We, it can be in tranches of two or three tranches that can be delivered into the, into the federal mortgage of Nigeria. The other thing that uh, we have to look at is the debt equity. The debt equity uh, is a long term debt capital as part of the capital structure. This means that uh, we can have other institutional investors, both within the country as well as offshore, to invest into the fund, into the FNBN. With these two scenarios, you'll find that uh, the two we, we are, we will now do our own core business, which is the social housing, sort of to, to finance or to service the NHF contributors using the, the, the equity capital from the federal government of Nigeria to, to ensure that the social housing and affordable housing is delivered at the same 6% the same six percent interest rate over a long period of time. While the other debt equity, we intend to use it to finance the commercial mortgages and even other mortgages that are non-housing, like the commercial uh, shopping malls and other things that are likely to, to come up. So our undebt equity is the one that uh, we want uh, institutional investors to come in, both within the country and offshore. And it can be determined by the, 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 the cost of the capital that we are getting. So therefore, the possibility exists. Uh, we are cleaning up our books now and updating our financial records to ensure that uh, we we'll go ahead with this. So each one of them will come at its own time, and then the capitalization can go ahead. The type of investors can be those uh, wishing to make social impact, and we'll find a government-owned institution very much preferred because of the relatively higher confidence that exists for public institutions, whose goals has always been uh, to align with the social objectives they want to achieve. While notwithstanding this pandemic, I want to assure you that the issue of recapitalization is a long and narrow, and uh, you may not necessarily achieve that all in one day. But uh, with the two scenarios that I give it is doable. So our capitalization plan are still on board because they are long term and uh, it's going to take off sooner than later. In as much as uh, we have now passed it to the uh, honorable minister who now presented to the to the Thank Federal you. Executive Council for approval of us to go into that. Thank you very Thank much. You, now, just yesterday, Thank you. I got a call mm. after our AIT program mm. in the month. And the person called, hello, is this Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria? And I asked the person, how do I help you? And the person said, sorry, I've not received a map this month. I don't know whether my money has been signed. And I said, don't you have the hashtag to show your balance, which will reflect whether it has been added or not. The person said, yes, sir. Can, you, can I remind him? And I reminded the person. I gave the person the yeah. one And in a few minutes, the person sent me a text message to appreciate me that the money has and in the course of that, he called me back again, explaining another problem. And that problem is what will take me to Reverend Shimen now. Some of your Shimen, are you aware that many Nigerians who are contributors to NHF cannot even afford the house of three million? Who is yes, financing sir. the demand side? Who is financing the demand side? Sometimes somebody came to Abuja and he saw so many of the five houses and was asking. And they said, Nigeria is having housing deficit. Why are all these houses not being occupied? Something seems to be wrong. Can you explain to us what is wrong with the demand side? 
what can be done? Because that one needs a lot of action for Nigeria to be able to hold a home. Nigerians cannot afford 3 million houses, a good number of people. And they are the ones that are being affected by COVID-19. They are living in slum. Thank you so much, uh, Festus. Um, this is why I mentioned the need for us to be able to recapitalize the Federal Money Bank. Um, we've been kind of housing deficit, but a lot of people built houses, and the money they use in building those houses are money they could have used to enter into entrepreneurship and other productive activities. So by the time we are able to provide mortgage for these ones, we have quite a number of houses that people want to mortgage and cannot do, and Federal Mortgage Bank does not have the money to provide for them. And that is why we are asking that one is to look for um, affordable houses, which requires a lot of amendment or fine tuning of the transaction dynamics in terms of the cost centers. Because affordable housing is not under the purview alone of the developer. There are other issues like infrastructure, like my, my president of Freda has mentioned. So affordable housing has so many issues that goes with it, including the taste of the person. But let's leave that one for now. Can we now liberate the equity that is trapped in existing houses to enable some of the people continue to develop new houses? So many developers have homes that they cannot sell. Why they cannot sell is that the people are able to pay the equity contribution, but the mortgage banks cannot provide them with the mortgage for those houses. So the developers are trapped with those houses. Hundreds, tens of thousands of houses across the country. So that whereas we are asking that we must have to create new affordable houses, I agree with that. But these developers are already trapped in homes they have built. People are willing to buy it, but on mortgage basis, but they are not able to get the mortgage they deserve. And we have a federal mortgage bank that has good rates at 6% that are willing to give them a mortgage, but they don't have the financial capacity to do that. And they have been crying to both federal mortgage bank and other Nigerians. Can we please recapitalize so that we'll be able to at least liberate these developers, liberate these individuals who have used all the money that they have used in their business to build houses. So that is an aspect of the scenario in the housing ecosystem that is not being mentioned. And we need to mention it in a webinar like this. If you ask Federal Mortgage Bank, they will tell you that they have a lot of unmet applications and requirements on the demand side. So can we mop up this area? And that is why we are proposing that we should do a number of things with the CBN intervention. One, give funds to Federal Mortgage Bank to be able to uh, create mortgages for the demand side. Number two, find a way of investment in the supply side so that new houses can be built. Number three, provide funding for institutional capacity development, which includes the whole housing ecosystem to improve the ability of stakeholders on that value chain to be able to perform and have a directed, targeted uh, approach to solving our problem. And I believe that Federal Mortgage Bank has done very well. And I want to appreciate the MD and the current team. They are listening and they know that, that these are the areas that we have to go. What we need is for all of us to put our voice together and Thank ask. You. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sophie Oboshuku. At this point, I'd like to announce again that the FNDM online and a lot of questions are asked. We need you to respond to those questions. Do you know about FNDM? Do you know FNDM can help you to own a home? Do you know FNDM has And more and more questions are now online for our participants to fill. We want to know 
how well you know about the Federal Mortgage Bank activities. So that is the reason for you to answer that question. Do you know that FMBI gives single digit loan? I only need yes or no from you. Do you know that as a contributor, you will receive a refund of your contributions with interest? Do you know you can check your contribution anywhere at any time? Do you know FMBL is focused on both the former and the former sector? Do you know FMBL has accessible offices in all the state of the federations? These are questions now online for us to answer one by one before we leave. Now, I want to go to Mr. Ake, Mr. Fakeye. Mr. Fakeye, hearing from what the Soviet Shime had just said, I have just received a question here that where is the product of FMBA that has to do with rental housing? What is FMBA doing about cooperative? Majority of Nigeria cannot get even 10 percent of three of, of, um, of three million, which is 300,000. With rental housing, this can solve the problem of the 300,000 they need to bring. Because all Nigerians, majority of Nigerians can pay for it. And as far as they can pay for it, that shows a good number of Nigerians can own a home. Mr. Fakaya, please, can you respond to us? Tell us about your products. Rent, rent, is it rent to home or rental housing? Can we know what is it? Cooperative housing, what is it? And what you have you done here? What are the achievements or success story you have for the, for the public to know? Thank you very much for that question. So as, as part of uh, improving service delivery to our customers, we know that Nigerians have various housing needs. And what we're trying to do as an institution is to identify specific needs and develop that will meet each of those needs. So our uh, major product is the NHF mortgage loan, which we give a maximum of 15 million Naira, subject to the affordability of the individual uh, to buy a house. It attracts 6% interest rates and the individual or the beneficiary can repay for as long as 30 years, depending on his age, till he or she gets to the age of 60 years. Uh, we have also recently developed another product, which is the home renovation loan. It's a maximum of 1 million Naira. It also attracts interest rates of just 6%, and the individual can repay over five years. But this home renovation loan is convenient. It's probably one of the most convenient loans accessible in the market. Now, all you need is to show evidence of having one income form of income or the other, and you your employer undertakes that your repayment, he will be deducting and resending the repayments to FMBN, and you have two people as guarantors. So it's a simple process. It's not too complicated, not too many legal issues involved, but it's a housing microfinance loan for any individual to renovate, to expand, to upgrade his or her housing. Uh, uh, housing. Uh, what we have even seen, uh, my MD has mentioned it at several forums, that some people collect this loan, which is a maximum of one million naira, and can from scratch build their own houses, particularly in the rural areas so that they have their own houses. We also recently introduced the NHF construction loan. Now, for individuals who already have their land and they have good title for that land and they have approved building plans for their development, they can come to FMBN and apply directly to FMBN and we can give them that facility. It's also a maximum of 15 million naira, but subject to the affordability of the individual. This loan, the NHF construction loan, which we give to individuals to build their own homes, is a slightly uh, higher interest rate of just 7%. So it's still single digit, 7%, and it's affordable. But you must have your own land and title to the land and an approved building plan. Uh, very recently also, we introduced the rent to own 
uh, product. And the red zone is that you can approach FMBN wherever you see that we have any house uh, which, uh, which we have completed and is for sale. You can opt that instead of getting a mortgage to buy the house, you want to be a renter. So you move into the house immediately. We avoid all the legal complications of a mortgage transaction. So you get access to housing or to home ownership immediately. And then what you do is you pay rent, since it's a rent to own program. You pay rent over a period of time, as also as long as 30 years. Uh, and then at the end of it, you become the homeowner of that property. So, uh, but this comes at a slightly higher interest rate of 9%, still single digit at 9%. So these are some of the loans that we have for individuals. For, for cooperatives, we have a cooperative housing development loan. So a cooperative can approach Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria and say, look, we have a social number of, of members and we want to build houses for them. And FABN will, find, will fund the construction of those houses. Thank you. So more information is on our website. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fakaye. I just got another question, and uh, I'm going to the executive director of the Federal Mortgage Bank in charge of loans. The question says that this report that estate developers are owing so much money in Federal Mortgage Bank. Can you give us an update? on the effort of Federal Mortgage Bank to recover this money that belongs to Nigerian workers. The second director loan. Yes, Mr. 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 Festus. Um, yes. yes, when we um, resume um, office in 2017, we've met um, a huge of um, um, non-performing loans um, on the um, projects that have been started and been stagnant. Um, and it was the funds of the contributors that have been, that have been um, um, held there. The um, method, the approach we, we, we took was to have an interactions with those um, developers who has um, at various stages collected monies from Federal Mortgage Bank to um, build and at a point for one reason or the other they were not able to complete the, 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 the project. So um, on, case by, on case by case basis we have interacted and we have been able to um, largely get some some reviewed some we have we were able to exit so these are what we have been doing since in in the in the first second year that we that 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 we've we, 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 we've resumed and that's that is what gave birth to the um relaunching of rent to own because we have had many sites abundant some completed, some were not completed. We had to complete so that we can be able to get people into the houses without paying a dime to enter into the houses. And so that was that was as I have said, gave back to the to the to the rent to own. Because as is up till today, we are we are launching our rent our uh, launching rent to own on our sites alone for now because we are trying as much as possible to got all those houses, all those loans performing. So that is what we have been doing. And all those monies that were trapped, were be, we, were, we were able to, been able to, 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 to get them back. Aside from that, those that were not able to pay, then we have engaged some um, consultants to be able to, 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 to get back those monies. Yes, Mr. Fesus. Thank you, madam. Now we have uh, come to the end of the program. Uh, we only entertain the MD to say one or two. Once you have to ask a question here. Yeah? I have about 80 questions. I want to apologize to all the participants. Please, we can.
cannot ask all these questions from FMBN within this one and a half hours program. I have been receiving messages of people commenting them for innovation, for what they are doing. We appreciate all of you who feel that FMBM should be appreciated and FMBM should be commended. I am also, I believe in that FMBM should be appreciated for the innovation and for the creativity that they are bringing in into this sector. Now, I, this question I must ask the MD before I tell him to say his last thing. And others should also be preparing to say their last statement on the program. But before the MD say his last statement, I have this question that I think he should answer because this question is very important. There have been so many abandoned projects of FMBN from Sudega to Kaduna to Baoshi. Some of these houses have been taken over by criminals and towns. What is FMB? We can't be talking of uh, housing deficits and those houses are there. So, what is FMBN doing about these houses? I mean, I think this person is a reporter. He said, I want to do a report on those houses. They don't do any reports. Just hear what the FMB, I'm sure FMB has a program. MD, did you hear my question? No, no, please. I'm just joining. It, uh, I have some little hitch up. What's the okay. question, please? The question yes. is this. I think it's uh, from the media. He said he, he observed yeah. that FMB has many abandoned housing projects. The person specifically mentions Sulega housing projects. Uh, Sulega, you see, mention somewhere in Sulega. Yeah. He said, he said some, some of those houses are either seventy percent or sixty-five percent completed, and they have said they are abandoned for the past three, four years. What is happening? And what is FMB doing about these houses? Yeah, quite well that uh, <clears throat> when we came on board, we met some of those abandoned projects that are uh, uh, at various stages of completion due to many problems that arose during that time of, uh, of, of, of on the face of that construction. We met them on ground currently when we came, but I want to assure you that uh, the current board, the current management since we came on board, we have never had any reason for any abandoned project. But we have been trying to micromanage those abandoned projects to see what we can do to ensure that uh, they are revitalized, they are completed, and then taken over and, and uh, do that. We are in collaboration with Redan, which uh, the leadership are here on this webinar, to see what we can do with those developers who have abandoned the project. Some of the problems you'll find that is from the developer's side. Some problems are from the FNBN side, and some problems are from even the beneficiaries or the state governments. Sometimes a project will start without uh, building approval, and then the state government or wherever the location is will come and then put a stop order on that project. And before you know it, the project stays there abandoned. Sometimes it's about uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, variation of, uh, of the contract or of the loan that has been given to them. The developer may likely see that uh, the time of award the contract can the the, war, the the construction cannot go ahead now due to change of fluctuation of building materials or other things. So what the management is doing is looking at it based on its merit of each one of them to see what you can do. The least we always do is that we take over the project from that developer and uh, see what you can do to exit him and then get another consultant who can take over and complete the project. We have done so much on that. We have done a lot on, on that. We have done one upsi in here, Kujay. We have done the hydroform project in uh, the same project. We have done a lot of other projects that are going on there. So those kind of projects are, are lying and, and are being, the manager is doing a lot of effort to see that we can provide them and get back to the contract. Thank you. Architect Ahmed Dangiwa, thank you for that uh, beautiful response. And I'm sure yes. the public are very impressed at uh, your yes. response. And I will have this uh, development. Thank you, Mr. Festus. Mr. Festus, I think before you before you round up, um, as MD said, he was not there when you have uh, have sent the you have asked the question. You have specifically mentioned the ho those houses that were li that were lying in Suleja, Kaduna, and Bauchi particularly. Yes. And yes. I want yes. to and I want to I want to I want to tell you that 
almost all of those houses were rent to own. We have already allocated almost all of them, especially Kaduna is 100% um, um, allocated to rent okay. to own. So also, so also um, Bauchi, we are, we are, we are, we are almost, we are almost completed. And I want to, I want to assure you, even Suleja, we are looking at getting um, um, some organizations that are, that are near to those sites so that they can be able to, to, to offtake them on rent to own. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Hidi. Yes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Fesus. Yes, I can hear you, ma'am. Uh -huh. That is that is that is on 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 those houses that were lined. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. Now, please, uh, I will start from uh, the president of Market Banking Association of Nigeria, who will make his last statement on this program on the subject matter, Mr. Akilusi. Right. Thank you so much for such a beautiful program, bringing into focus major stakeholders in the housing value chain. This period of the lockdown provides a great opportunity for the country. This is a time where there is increasing focus on housing sector nationally by both governors, central bank, and everybody else. Because of the importance of housing for health reasons and also for the purpose of job creation, poverty alleviation, an opportunity for people to house our homeless people. And I think this opportunity should be embraced for us to turn the housing lemon, as I will call it, to the housing lemonade. It's a clarion call for everybody to be on board. Let's all move this housing so, so that year in, year out, we won't keep talking about housing deficits, homeless Nigerians, increasing population, slums, and all those kind of things we are talking about. This is an opportunity, and I'm sure we'll all embrace it. Once again, thank you for inviting Umban to be represented on this platform, and we look forward to working with major stakeholders, including Federal Mortgage Bank. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mortgage Bank and Association of Nigeria President. Now I move to the president of Moreda to say his yes. last statement. On the program. Uh, thank you, Mr. Festus. We are very happy to be uh, at this program. We are just want to uh, let you know that we have repositioned Raiden uh, by way of creating what we call estate endorsement initiative, which is to check the members and ensure compliance to housing development. Uh, this includes if there is any developer who has under the table deal. Uh, we are very sure that the leader, uh, leadership now will make sure they cover the money of that person. And also, if any developer who is registered with Raiden take any loan facility from any place, and uh, with the knowledge of uh, the leadership of Raiden, we will make sure the delivery is being done without any history. Uh, we have also uh, uh, been able to smoothen our relationship with SUMO and the NFIU, uh, whereby we comply with the extent laws and regulations uh, to avoid money laundering and other situations. Raiden has a code of conduct as well, where we regulate and ensure best practice in the industry. So we assure you we are positioned stronger to make sure we have driven away quacks from our industry, uh, from our operations. Thank you so much. Thank you, my, my, my president. Now let me go to Mr. Fakaya. The last statement of this program in one minute because our time is fast spent. One minute. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I want to appreciate the opportunity for us to inform Nigerians about what we're doing as an institution. They say information is power. And now, this, under these lockdown conditions, a lot of us are online. I will advise Nigerians, particularly a lot of our participants who have asked questions to go online to www.fmbn.gov.ng, www.fmbn.gov.ng, so that we can have as much information as we need to make that informed decision that will convert every one of us to become homeowners. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fak. Now to survey your shime. Want to hear your last statement on this program? Okay, thank you so much, uh, moderator. I'd like to say that the construction and the agricultural sector holds the key post COVID. FMBN on its own cannot do it. We need stakeholders to help FMBN, uh, Redan, Mbang, the three of them cannot do it alone. We need the National Assembly, and more importantly, we need the state governments to key in so as to make their states a destination of choice for investors. So that in so doing, employment will be generated. They need to have an improvement in the Okay, they need to have an improvement in the IGR by making their states a position of choice for real estate development, amend the laws, reduce the transaction costs, reduce the transaction time, and ensure that they adopt the modern mortgage and foreclosure law and have the multi dock court process so that we reduce the litigation time and cost concerning real estate disputes and arbitration. If we do that, I'm sure we will move forward and then we'll be happier for it. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Fesus. I want to um, use this media to appreciate you for initiating this um, conversation, I think for the enlightenment and knowledge of the uh, uh, public. Um, ours is, we are always um, looking at this, our stakeholders. Who, who who are who are our 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 um, partners that we are is a part and parcel of all those um, um, initiatives because that is the only um, um, media that we can be able to 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 move this um, housing sector um, um, and 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 mortgage provision to the Nigerian populars, I think, easier. Thank you. Thank you, Hadia. Now to the MD of the Federal Mortgage Bank, in one, in one minute. Two minutes. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, uh, all said and done, our uh, executive director has said uh, things that are very much German, especially as regards to the CBN issue. We want to assure CBN and other stakeholders that uh, the current management is well focused. Judging from the achievements we have realized in the past three years, we will not rest on our oaths and we will remain, uh, will sustain our focus. Going forward, our goals has always been to get all the 36 states of the Federation contribute to the scheme, ensure institutional investors prescribe to the NHF Act, like the bank and insurance companies, to which we are now discussing extensively with them and they are cooperating very well. We also comply under the term that they will be find it very attractive. We also want to ensure that we integrate the informal sector. This is one area to which this management is well focused. The informal sector is a large market that uh, we are focusing on. You'll find that if you go to Lagos, the number of informal sector are far out, out, outweigh the number of formal sector that are there. You'll find that an informal sector person earns more than even the person that is uh, earning salary in the, in the companies, in the, in the private uh, organization. So that uh, uh, through that, we are improving our delivery and then improve our services. For the Imban and the Red and to which we are collaborating so much, we want to assure them that FMBN is taking a lot of palliative measures, especially in these challenging times of our COVID pandemic, to which that uh, uh, palliative measures will come on board. We want to invite them to sit down and see areas where the palliatives can come so as to reduce this burden, because some of the developers are already on site, they are trapped with this type of pandemic, they cannot move further. So any intro that may likely accrue, it has to be more, it has to be waived, and then moratorium has to be established for that. So also in terms of uh, Imban and other uh, off-takers who are who are on that. So overall, we'll respond by our response will be guided by ensuring sustainable development. 
efforts to overcome the present challenges and achieve a win-win solutions to our issues. Thank you very much. Before we pass the final message to you, we have a message from a stakeholder. The latest couple in town. Good day, sir. How are you? Oh, sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, drinks? No, we're, we're fine, sir. How was the moon experience? It was quite an experience. Mm. How about the house? We are renting at the moment, but we intend to save enough to own a home house, right? Why not avoid all those Shylock landlords and own a house up front? You know, the average income and cost of building houses today in Nigeria, not age, is the best option. No sweat. I tell you what, that was how I got my first house, and I've never regretted it. To make good homes, and by implication, a good society, an individual is expected to have an abode from which to take off and return at the end of each day. At the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, everyone deserves a home. Come join us at FMBN, and let's shelter Nigeria together. Distinguished, very important uh, speakers who have been with us in the last few hours. We have come to the end of today's discussion on the topic COVID 19, housing as a solution, FMBN leading through the crisis. From all indications, we can see from the presentation that the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is ready to lead. The sector as we go out of the COVID-19. I want to say a very big thank you to the management of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria for allowing us to do a spotlight in focus on their activities. We want to thank them for achievement they are making. We want to also appreciate them for new initiative, new innovation that they will be bringing into the system. I thank the president of the Mortgage Banking Association of Nigeria for his commitment and for his support. The president of Real Estate Developer Association of Nigeria, a new brand president, Aliyu Wamako, we say a very big thank you to you, but you must know that you have a very big task ahead of you now that you are the president during the COVID-19 era. I want to thank Sovio Goshu Kushime, who has become an authority in the housing sector in Nigeria. We appreciate your contribution to the housing sector. And we must let you know that Aluta continua, the struggle continues. But you. you see many Nigeria owing properties at ease. Until we see many Nigeria entering into mortgage bank and have access to the houses. We intend to have by next week another webinar that will only parade the civil executive of the housing finance organizations in Nigeria with the CBN. They have confirmed participation. We have to bring them together the MD Federal Mortgage Bank, MD NMRC, MD Family Home Fund, and the director of other banking. Uh, our financial institutions in the federal and the central bank of Nigeria. We are working on some commissioners for housing to also have a feature in the next weeks. We are also using the commissioner to talk to some governors who are in charge of our land and who have decided not to be signing the CFO and who have decided to turn issue of land as a way of generating revenue. Yeah, I think I have to promote this thing. Thank you to all the participants. I can see this is the biggest we have ever had. The whole house is full. The mortgage banks, the estate developers, the practitioners in the housing sector, the professionals. We say thank you for connecting to Federal Mortgage Bank discussion. All senior management staff of Federal Mortgage Bank, I can see a lot of you connected. You are highly appreciated. And by afternoon today, we'll be having another discussion that will focus on artisans' development in Nigeria. We have a lot of people from outside the country who will be connecting to us because the issue of job creation is very key. How do we do it at this pandemic? 
and that will be the focus by 3.30, 3, 3 o'clock today, this afternoon. If you are free, you can join us. I think we already have another group, another group of people who have already subscribed, but there are some of them who are not in the mortgage or housing finance sector. I want to say a very big thank you to all the participants, the speakers, and this is the head of webinar discussion of Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. Bye-bye to everyone.